My name is Derek and today I'm going to be showing you how to replace the LCD panel on a MacBook. Now this particular MacBook that I'm working on is model A2485 and this repair is basically identical to the A2442. This is the panel. To some of you this might seem like a daunting repair and to be honest it is. But I'm going to be showing you some things that you can do to make this much easier. Let's get into the video. As you can see a nice crack here with lines definitely needs a new panel a bit dirty I'll give that a cleaning but let's speed through this tear down because that's not what we're here for I've left just a single screw in each one of the hinges so that we can let this hinge out so I've got it here over the edge of my desk now I can take out the last two screws if you didn't see this a lot of people tear this in the corner here so make sure you don't tear that and then it'll just slide right off like that all right let's move on to separating this display from the frame one thing to note big important thing to note we cannot damage the backlight backlights on this are replaceable the filaments themselves but that's also pretty expensive so let's do our best not to damage it and this is where it gets a little bit more meticulous. Let me show you how it goes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to gently get under the edge here. And we're going to lift up and kind of push through just like that. And then I'll come in with a spudger. And start to slide. And it'll kind of just pop as we slide down the side. And we'll just peel that away and set it aside for later. Now we have all of these screws going down. Some are silver, some are black, and we need to get rid of all of them. And don't forget the ones that are hiding in the corners. So I've kind of done things a little out of order here. Uh, take out the two silver screws, and then if you get under this bar here. All right, yeah. And if you take that off first, then it won't get in the way of the black screws at all. Now we have four screws down here holding the flex down. So we'll go ahead and take those ones out. All right, I'm gonna take a few minutes to carefully pry these flex cables gently away from the frame. And now for the fun part. So what we're looking for is this little black shiny piece of glue. I'm gonna kind of pick at it a little bit and get it to pop away from the frame. If I can get enough of it like that, I'm gonna grab it and start to try to roll it in the tweezers. And we're just gonna gently pull and let it stretch. You kind of want to come out I'm under two sides. I don't care about the one on the left, I care about the one on the right. I'm just going to pull the wind, pull the wind. We don't want it to break like that. Not the end of the world if it breaks, but we don't want it to break. If and when it does break, what we're going to do is get under the rubber here and gently pull it up so we can grab it. And we'll carefully pull it up and out of the gap here. We don't want to stretch it at all, so we're just going to do inch at a time. And we'll just keep that going all the way around. Not stretching it at all, we're just lifting and moving, lifting and moving, lifting and moving. It takes little, literally no effort to get this out. I'm just being really gentle with it, letting it come out without stretching it. that's where it begins. So we'll hold on to that for later. Now I'll focus on this side, see if I can get it up and out. All right, after that little break there, I was able to get a hold of it again. Now we should be able to pull this nice and slowly. Give it a little bit of 
tension here to help free up the some of the friction by flexing the screen up a little in the bottom. And we're slowly making our way towards the top. Gives you an idea of how long it gets, only halfway, halfway up the screen. It's a slow going process to, to sit here and pull on the adhesive. It beats having to extract it with heat when it comes to saving the backlight. So nice and slowly. Take you a few minutes to go across the top. All in all, I expect to take maybe a whole 10 minutes just getting the adhesive off. If you rush it, it will break. And we'll come around the corner here. Taking our time, making sure we don't break. Trying our best not to break it. Sometimes you just have to wait for it to release. If you pull too hard, it's just gonna break. When you feel too much tension, just hold it and hold it and hold it. Eventually it'll let go and you'll be able to continue to pull again, just like that. I like fishing with one pound test line with a 30 pound fish. It's doable, you just gotta really be careful. You know, it's probably more like equivalent of catching a, a large fish like a swordfish or a tuna with a regular fishing pole. In other words, not easy to do without breaking the, the adhesive. And we're almost there. There we go. And now the whole panel is free. So now we can gently lift on the panel and carefully set it down. You need to be really careful about this flex here. Now this connector is a little bit unique. I'm gonna add some isopropyl alcohol to the bracket to help break up the adhesive. That comes off. Now we can go deal with pulling this out. There's two little prongs that, that stick up stick up a little in there. You need to push them down to pull it out. Just like that. See the prongs there. We're not done with this yet. We need to transfer this metal bar that goes across the back. One of the things that we need to take note of is where it lines up with things so that we can line it up properly. And Last but not least, we need to peel back this sticker. This I see and this I see, this little glass I see, need to be transferred over to the new display. You peel back these stickers here, and this is also something to kind of note, is how this flex, these flex cables, all of them fold up. You can kind of see how they come. And you can see all we're doing is really Kind of folding that over and pinching that up. We'll do that on each one of them on the new screen too. Add some isopropyl alcohol. So to make this easier because this screen is the busted one, I'm just going to slice through these flex cables so I can easier access while soldering. All right, so we've got the dot up in this corner and the dot in this corner. So we've got the little arrow here to help us make sure we get this one in the right spot. And we'll just have to remember upper right. So we'll add some flux here. This will help kind of protect the solder pads, help them from oxidizing too much as we're removing these ICs. I'm going to take my heat at about, about 340 degrees Celsius. Careful not to lose them in the process. And there you go, we've got our little EEPROM here. 
and our main EDID chip. We're going to wick off all of the solder so we can prep it for reballing. We'll clean off the burnt flux with some isopropyl alcohol and a brush. All right, so what we're going to do is we'll carefully get under the sticker here and peel that up. And we've already taken off the original, so we need to now take this one off and discard it along with this one. And we can put back the original, the ones that came on the original, the ones that came on the screen from Apple uh, in place of here. Put it all back together. Let's get to it. Now, if you're wondering why it's important to transfer over these ICs, let me tell you a little bit about them. The EEPROM chip stores crucial display data, such as resolution settings, color profiles, and other parameters specific to the LCD panel. This data is essential for the MacBook's operating system to recognize and properly communicate with the display. The EDID chips contain information about the display's manufacturer, model, supported resolutions, refresh rate, and other capabilities. This information is transmitted to the MacBook's graphics controller during the initialization process to ensure proper display configurations. Transferring these ICs from the old panel to the new panel ensures that the replacement display behaves identically to the original one and maintains compatibility with the MacBook's hardware and software. If these ICs are not transferred or are damaged during the replacement process, it can lead to display issues such as incorrect resolution, color distortion, or even a failure to display an image altogether. I'm going to be adding some flux and spreading it out across the, the surfaces here. And we'll line up the chip with the dot in the correct corner. And we'll carefully heat this up until it wants to snap into place. So as you can see here, that chip kind of snaps into place and I nudge it a little bit. And we'll do the same with the EEPROM. We're going to carefully line it up and we'll let it kind of snap into place and then we'll give it another little tap with the, the tweezers there. It snaps into place and tap. And I also move this cap back into place. All right, we've now got the both ICs soldered on there. Go ahead and try to put the sticker back now. Now we've got to put back the metal bracket. There was some Old adhesive, we'll just tape right over that. Now we just have to line it up where it went before. We'll take our flex cable here and slide it on in. So now we're going to tape up the borders and put back the bezel. All right, so now we've got adhesive on there. All right, so we've got bezel back in. We'll peel off the protector. We'll gently set it down inside, making sure it slides under the rubber here. in the corners. All right, we're getting a really good fitting all the way around the border. So now it's time to peel off the protectors and then we can reassemble all of the screws and brackets, everything at the bottom. 
All right, now that I've got those, I'm just gonna double check the alignment of the corners here. Make sure I like it. little bit of charge we we're able to get it to come back on but yeah now we're good to go so there you go that's how to replace the LCD panel on a MacBook Pro a2485, pretty much identical to the MacBook A2442 that I did in a previous video. There are some differences, so check out that video if you haven't already. I'll link it right here. If this is something that you want to try, but you have questions or concerns, leave them in the comments below. Because one of the most satisfying things is being able to take a screen that isn't working and get it working again with all of its functions without losing things like the camera having a shadow effect at the top other reasons to do this display to replace the to transfer the ic's etc it's a super satisfying repair now this repair is probably going to be, be a little more expensive as far as the labor is concerned the panel's expensive not as expensive as your standard display panel with lid and frame and everything given this repair can take several hours minimum amount of time that you'd want to dedicate to this repair is probably like three hours even though it, you could probably do it faster but this is truly one of those repairs that requires a lot of different skills being able to control the heat the meticulousness of removing the display the solder work, the tear down itself, all of that, all of that. So if you haven't already, go ahead and smash the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already for more future videos like this. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.